Hi. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to Supercars of London. I've got myself talking in the background on the on the uh, video editing software, and I'm in bed again. And I'm going to quickly try and give an explanation as to why I always start the vlogs here. Now, at the moment, I'm living at my mum's house, and I would much rather none of that gets put on the daily vlogs. As soon as I move out and I have my own place and I can kit out the inside of my house the way that I want, as cool looking as possible, futuristic, technological, uh, and all that stuff, like clapping for lights and things like that, then I'm gonna be vlogging, walking around, not doing, um, well, I'll, I'll just vlog. Whereas when I'm in my mum's house, I kind of just wanna get as little as possible um, in the vlog and focus it on the cars, focus it on what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day video. So I always try and find like a really bland backdrop, like my bed, um, but also it's just a great place for me to edit in the morning. I wake up half past eight, edit until about half past nine, 10 o'clock, and today I'm going straight to SB and I'm gonna focus today on my second supercar. I'm en route to SB Race Engineering. I haven't been here since last Monday, I think, because then Tuesday and Wednesday I was out with the Audi RS3, and then Thursday and Friday, they got the better of me. I had too much work to do, but I am loving the summer at the moment. 15 degrees outside, it's not even 10 o'clock, and I could just wear t-shirts all day, every day. It is just the perfect feel-good combination. Let me know whether you love the sun and whether you love summer. And let me know if you're going on holiday as well and where you're going on holiday, because it's not even it's less than three weeks now until I head off to Portugal with my family and for those that have been asking I go down to Faro so I fly down to Faro and then I head to a um, it's a golfing resort in the south of Portugal called Val de Lobo and a very English accent there so, I'm in the SB office a place where I probably didn't spend enough time last week and there's some cool cars out here. You can see a 430 SLR McLaren and a Maserati Quattroporte. My car is parked a little bit further down that way. Now, my morning has been spent checking out the new Shell video, the one that I was involved with, the V-Power Nitro Plus Fuel. The Driving Challenge video is live on their YouTube channel. I will leave the link in the description below. It features me, it features Tim, it features Car Throttle, and it also features a few other familiar faces from the automotive world. And it's a really, really cool video. You get to see a little bit of behind the scenes of what we got up to on the Driving Challenge with the BMW X6. However, my video is also ready, and I'm hoping that it's going to be going live um, a bit later on today after this daily vlog. It's a little bit confusing because I'm trying to um, foresee 24 hours ahead when, this, when I'm filming this to when this vlog is going live. However, the Shell video is super cool, so definitely check that out. That's done. I'm also gonna make a few phone calls today and then get down to the nitty gritty of my second supercar. And this daily vlog is really gonna hone in on a few major questions that are asked when buying a used supercar, but also when selling a used supercar. It's something that I've never done before, but I have been so um, up to date with all of, my, all of the used car markets across Auto Trader and Piston Heads over the last five years that I feel like I um, could do a pretty good job of valuing quite a lot of cars. My HRO and experience as well has helped um, with buying and selling cars. So I'm sat at my desk. As you can see, one thing is missing, the charger. And I thought that there was a, a um, laptop charger here, but I don't think there is. And my battery at the moment, can you see that? Yeah, it's running out, which means at lunchtime, I'm gonna have to go home get my charger for my laptop. <laughs> I've got Sam's WhatsApp here. Um, <laughs> basically, you would have already seen this. See through glass, I know you're watching, go. I just sent him the video that I've just made, which is gonna go live on Instagram in the next 20 minutes, half an hour or so, live. But obviously this is a day later on the daily vlogs. You would have seen it. Just hilarious. <laughs> right, whilst I'm out and about getting fuel and my laptop charger, but let's talk and start the discussion on my second supercar and the main factors that I think about when I am uh, trying to sort out or trying to pick 
my second supercar. My dream car is the Lamborghini Murcielago LP640. It may not drive the best, it may not have the best or most up-to-date technology, it might not be the most usable on a day-to-day -day basis, it's super wide, but it's the car that I gr uh, grew up dreaming about. I have driven one, and yeah, you do sit um, not really pointing straight on the steering wheel. It doesn't matter, like it is my pin-up car and it is the one dream supercar that I want and if I can have that um, or buy that by the age of 25 then I mean that is the ultimate dream come true. It's all started when I checked the prices of the Audi R8 and over the last year this car has actually held its value very well and might actually be worth more than what I paid for it last year. And that's down to the demand, the supply, the fact that this car is a manual gearbox and an early one, and it's just the pinnacle of the R8. The new R8 that's coming out, you can't get it in manual, so it's becoming a bit of a collectible. Um, so there might be some people in there. My sensible head is hold on to it and see how high up this car goes in value. But my not so sensible head and my young, my young brain that just wants a Lamborghini is telling me to jump out of it try and get more money than you paid for it and then uh, go for the dream car. So depreciation is obviously a huge factor. And when I'm picking the Lamborghini over the likes of the Ferrari 458 and the newer cars, the new V10 Plus R8, the new AMG GT and the new McLaren 570S, which are all fantastic and cool cars. The problem is they've still got a little way to go on the depreciation. I think the Ferrari 458 will drop to about 110 maybe even a hundred, I don't know, it's quite difficult to uh, predict, but it's all about predictions and checking out what's going on in the market, what do people want, what's difficult to get your hands on, which is why the R8 again is um, so expensive or going up in value. But the new McLaren, the new R8, you literally are predicting how much money you're gonna be losing. And when you're buying a car, that is your loss, that is your cost. Shush. So, you have to think, like if you're buying a car that's 120 grand, but you know that in a year's time it's gonna cost 70, that's costing you 50 grand over 12 months, which is just ridiculous, which is why the LP640 at the moment is such a cool car to think about owning, because it's gonna hold its value. It might even go up in value. The Lamborghini Diablos at the moment are shooting up in price. The Countaches, all of the classics, and the LP640 is next because it is so rare you can't really get them in the UK. There's two at the moment. There's one that is um, white and is for sale at 126, 127,000. And there's also a green one, which is 155,000. So the prices in them are all over the place, but they're definitely not gonna go down any more than 120, unless it's written off and crashed in half and, and all of that stuff. And show you some of the cars. These are my saved searches. Gallardo, Merchelago, 458. Let's look at Merchelago. There's none of them online. Right, so we start with these two. Well, the majority of the ones that are 6.2 litre. These are the original Merchelagos, which unfortunately aren't as cool as the likes of the 6.5. One there, 126. All of these are roasters with the silly roof, which is impossible. Don't understand why this is 162 grand. It's a 6.5 litre, 2008. It's done low miles, but it is just ridiculous. Scrolling through as well, I've noticed that the green coupe from uh, Bentley Edinburgh, I think it was, has gone as well. So the most, ex so there's two LP640s for sale. There's this one, which is stupidly priced with a stupid body kit. And then there's this one, which is reasonably priced, um, but I don't like the interior. If you look, I love the quilted interior. And this one, unfortunately, has got plain standard Merchelago interior, like the original, which we have no carbon as well, which isn't cool. So there's not many Merchelagos for sale. There is quite a few 458s, but I still think that they're too expensive. Gallardos, again, they're too expensive for a dated car. But these, like, look, the first, this is, an, this is a right-hand drive one, the one where my thumb is, 130 grand. It's not too bad. Um, but then you get a couple of left-hand drive cars, and then you're really looking at about 140 grand for a 458 and yeah you get the seven year warranty it's probably going to be more reliable better technology and all round an actual better car to drive than the lp640 cheaper running costs would you believe it but for me i still reckon the 458 is going to go to about 110 120 um and the gallardo i mean that's a 10 year old car even if you are buying an lp560 that's 2011 2009 it's 110 grand i just think 
for an extra 10, 15 grand, just get the big V12 with the doors going up. And that is my dream car anyway. The Gallardo isn't my dream car. The Mercialago LP640 is. So it's really difficult to judge where these cars are going to be in a year's time, but it's always better to go with your safest option. I know when you're buying a supercar, you probably shouldn't be thinking sensibly, um, but I'm actually not thinking sensibly, but it turns out to be one of the most sensible cars. So I think the best option and the dream option for me is obviously to buy the Lamborghini LP640 Merci Largo. And the, the, the conversations that we've had on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube about my second supercar. When is it going to start? How is it going to start? What's going to be the plan? I still don't know any of those sort of details and factors and things like that. I'm working seven days a week just flat out filming trying to do as much as I can to um, make sure that this car arrives by my 25th birthday. That is the dream, that is the goal, that is the ambition. And then as soon as I hit 25, um, then there's gonna be a new goal set for me. Um, but at the moment, that is what I'm thinking about. And I'm, it, it just gets me really excited just thinking about it. To think that I could own my dream car, my dream car by 25 is just absolutely mind boggling. Kind of like my dinner. This is for starters. I'm now leaving SB with the hope that there's not much traffic. I've been in London. Please don't tell me this is the traffic here. Thank God. I know it is, damn. Oh my God. Rather than ramble on like I normally do, when I'm stuck in traffic. I might actually end the daily vlog here because I might actually end it in Tesco's. No, I'm not gonna end it in Tesco's. I'm gonna end it here. So I hope, I really hope that the discussion around my second supercar makes sense, came out well, and overall was a good discussion and a good part or main sector of the daily vlogs when I was driving out getting fuel and then back at SB. So you guys um, that aren't familiar with the Auto Trader website, the place um, where most UK cars get put on for sale, Piston Heads is pretty much the same as Auto Trader with regards to Merci Largo. I'm checking every single day and I've actually got a few people out there that are in the trade looking for me as well. There's such a small handful of LP640s in the UK because I think they all got exported out towards Singapore and that area. So it's a real shame, but it's also great because it means that the value is pretty sort of stable and might actually go up, which is one of the main attractions, other than the fact that it's my dream car, as to why I want to buy the car. So that is, I'm in neutral, <laughs> trying to find the biting point, and I was like, I didn't want to, I was trying to play it cool, and I was like trying to look down at my gearbox without um, actually like, breaking eye contact with you. But that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of uh, today's daily vlog. And thank you so much for supporting the Supercars London channel and also these daily vlogs. Later on today, the Shell video is gonna be going live, which, what? I know you're indicating. I hate that roundabout. Towards the end of this evening, the Shell video, my Shell video, is gonna be going live so you guys get to see my driving challenge in the BMW X6. We have so much fun with Tim Shmi 150, Car Throttle, and Louis from Life on Unleaded. So make sure that you tune in for that. It is gonna be, it's a great video. It's a lot of fun. It's a light-hearted video. Um, but thank you for watching. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already. And it's time to open up the valves. I'm in the wrong gear. <laughs> see through glass. I know you're watching. Go. Oh! And he's going to really hate this uh, part of the day.